casual chip cleanup seems to be a thing for every YouTube machinist so here I am this has turned out to be a success though for the first time ever I've had a run where everything went to plan nothing went wrong and no lost steps nothing welcome back to my garage you will be pleased to hear that I'm sending this cylinder away for both machining and plating to Blixens Racing in Sweden. So thanks a lot guys for doing this for me. So they will deck it and bore it and plate it for me. So it won't be long now until we have another test engine ready for testing. So just hang in there. I haven't had the time to read and reply to all the comments in the, the previous video. I'm sorry, it's just been really busy with other, uh, other stuff. But um, I think there's some comments about me needing a tool setter. And I've got one. And also there's probably a lot of comments saying I need a tool probe. And thanks to Klaus Nielsen, Klaus Holm Nielsen I think. I've got one. He sent me one. It's a um, Schneider. 3D Taster, German, and it seems to be working really good. I spent this weekend running kind of a baptism by fire for the mill, uh, tried to make a triple clamp for a friend, and didn't turn out very good. It uh, it started out fine, We, we <laughs> I learned a lot, crashed a lot, I snapped an end mill in half. It didn't turn out very good, and uh, I'm still, still thinking there's some lost steps there. But also, while trying to dial in this uh, 3D probe, I noticed there's some run out in the spindle. If I keep having problems, I'm, I'm really thinking about uh, converting it to servo drive. For more torque and uh, the closed loop, the benefits of closed loop. So... Because this is a tool, it's a tool for me, it's not, not supposed to be, not meant to be a project, it's meant to be a tool for me to make parts. To make that intake valve and make crankcases when, when time comes. About crankcases, I haven't really appreciated the, the time and effort and skill that, uh, that Kai Wheeler put into my crankcase when he machined it. It's uh, it just CNC, it sounds so easy. It isn't, it isn't at all. Okay, I'll... I'll bring you in close here and I'll show you what I'm talking about with the spindle. With relatively light force I can bend it about 0.05 millimeters, which is excessive on a spindle. I have noticed though that it's running cool. Like it doesn't get, it get, gets a little bit warm but not hot. And I know these machines are known to run hot because there's, there's a short distance between the bearings and they run high preload to, to take out the slack there. Tear this off and uh, see how much we have to tear down before we can get to that, uh, that, that adjustable nut thing I'm hoping is there and uh, tighten it up. Got the automatic oiler working and it's set to give much more oil than I've been giving the machine like with the occasional pulls on that uh, plunger there so that might be one of my problems might be that it's been starving for oil and stalling because of that so yeah
spindle is running fine after I tighten up the, um, the bearing preload. Yet to see if it makes a difference. This test in wood turned out exactly like the, um, the aluminium counterpart. That step between the face and the bevel around the, um, the outside is something with my programming, not with um, not losing steps. I think forgot to set my probe at a known good surface and um, note down the, the number. So while I re-zeroed now, it, it was in the ballpark. Said was uh, 0 0.1 millimeters off, and X was spot on, Y was maybe 0 0.1 millimeters off. But we're talking wood here, and like. I took the dimensions of unfaced and un unmachined wood and I didn't note exactly where I did those measurements so yeah inconclusive I'll have to do another test like a stress test with a lot of set movement <laughs> You know you're waiting for uh, for two-stroke engine stuff, and it's coming. It's coming. See you next time.